Well, it's morning in Longreach and um, we're going to head up to Winton to the northwest from Longreach and then head southwest from Winton down to Lark Quarry. It's moments like this when one realises how big these bloody road trains are as you see them curve around on the road in front of us. One aspect of this run to Winton is that um, we're going along in the channel country so there's lots of uh, uh, floodways all the way. That previous bit was the uh, Thompson River and part thereof and as you can see we're coming down again onto more of this flat country. Um, here's some more black kites feeding on roadkill um, and uh, um, we're just heading through some of the beautiful what I call savannah grassland light woodland country and we've just gone over the ridge from the Thompson River which flows down into the Murray-Darling system and we're now going into the Cooper Creek catchment which feeds down into the Lake Eyre uh, Basin. We're just coming into the, um, the jump up on which the Australian Age of Dinosaurs is located. Rather a fun way to uh, build a gate. The Australian Age of Dinosaurs facility. At the entrance to the facility, meet Banjo. This is looking to the west from the Australian Age of Dinosaurs facility. We're on our way over to the laboratory section for a tour of there. This is a not-for-profit charity. So, uh, of course, we're encouraged to buy whatever we can. Family. He wasn't too sure what to do with it at first. He thought that if he told someone about it, it'd end up being taken away. And he didn't really want that to happen. He wanted to keep these bones in the Winton area. In contact with Queensland Museum, and this turned out to be a really good move because Queensland Museum were just as keen as David was for the bones to stay in the Winton area. They, the guy who's working over there at the moment, Wayne, he's one of our volunteers. An emu bone and dubbing. So you go from digger to dugger to oh. emu. Not quite, that's with the digs. This is uh, prepper to honorary technique. I'm really seeking something. There's a lot of rock coming on here. It's slow going. Yeah. Well, my name's Coralie Elliott. Um, well, this here, this is Banjo. He's probably one of my favourites. Basically, very mean killing machine. But, um, well, I basically grew up with all of this. The man that started up this organisation is actually my dad. So, Ever since I was about five or six, I've been able to go out into my back paddock and help with the dinosaur digs. So, basically, well, uh, my dad, he found the first one in 1999, just kept on finding more and more dinosaurs. Uh, as a kid, I didn't think much of it. Many of these just looked like ordinary old rocks to me. But growing up with it, I probably would have been one of the first ever human beings to see that 100 million year old fossil. So. When you look at it that way, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. The 4,200 acres of jump up that was donated to the Australian Age of Dinosaurs is this jump up country. In other words, sort of the old million years old plateau that's on top of the, the eroded plains that are below us now. And it's down on those plains, a couple of metres under the black soil that we find the dinosaur bone. And it's good to see good old Queensland Rail out there. Hard at work um, and uh, getting a whole lot of trucks off our highways because every semi-trailer is equivalent to 6,000 cars. We've just arrived in Winton and um, we'll have a quick drive click tick tour of the town on our way to Lark Quarry. It's got the town centre and um, then after that uh, make our way on to Lark Quarry. It's here where you can head on down to Blagensburg National Park or take the turn to uh, or keep going to Lark Quarry and Dinosaur Trackways or Junda or Longreach, Toncurry, Bullia everything. 
Hall here and down the road here is the Matilda uh, historic centre, love the big windmill up on the left hand side there which is part of the Sunset Opal factory and Coolabar Cafe and the Walsing Matilda Centre which is a, an absolutely great facility in terms of recognition of Australia's um, uh, Banjo Patterson and other Australiana. So this is the main street of Winton. We're travelling through um, Riverine Lanes areas. We're about 15 k's south of Winton uh, in the Channel Country and uh, a place called Surprise Creek. We're travelling through an area here which I think is uh, just about pure acacia or bottles of some sort. And uh, again in this low-lying, floody, easily flooded Channel Country. This is uh, one of the uh, emergency landing strips that are located throughout Australia used by the Royal Flying Doctor Service, um, should there be an emergency. And uh, you find them on uh, the roads out in the middle of nowhere, right across the Nullarbor, up in through Western Australia and the centre and right about. So here's the sign that tells you all about it. This is the Lark Quarry Conservation Park's um, building and interpretation centre which we'll be going into now and uh, having a look at a very old set of footprints. This is at the Lark Quarry and um, it talks about and it's got a lovely set of signs that lead up to the building um, explaining how when the asteroid hit the earth about 65 million years ago with what they call the KT event and um, it's recognized right over the globe as where there are uh, this one ash cloud and dust particles from that meteorite impact and it, the same thing meshes with the dinosaur fossils period. This is the Normanton box trees in this Mallee gum area as part of the Spinifex walk here at the Lark Quarry. Spinifex grasses glow in clumps and then um, the middles die out as nutrients are depleted but the dying plants in the middle replace nutrients allowing new uh, species to establish or new specimens of the same species. In some areas this rich jury crust or ironstone surface is where the area is rich in iron hydroxide and is weathered in all sorts of shapes as it's eroded down from the nearby breakaways and um, often is a sign that there could be opals in the area. Pull up here and see where that white clay is over here and that white ball you saw when you pulled in? That's an old opal mine. And he would uh, sit down there with his little pick and hammer and do a bit of opal mining on the way home. And he'd find all these little prints, like chook prints or bird prints. His ringer then took um, these footprints down to the uh, Brisbane Museum when he was on holidays. And he was lucky enough to talk to uh, um, the creator. They're definitely dinosaur prints. Um, where'd you get them? He said, oh, up with one. So he said, I'm going for a walk over here. Peel back some ironstone off the clay, which is like grease paper, just peel straight back. And I saw all these footprints. So they got pretty excited about that. Dinosaur footprints, brilliant. When they walked over, she saw the tracks and just about wet her pants. <laughs> just something else. So she got really excited about that and brought in um, a whole team and they shift, shifted 60 tonne of rock off this hill and just got down the road and exposed the only known dinosaur predator attack on a group of orthopods and um, uh, small dinosaurs and the resulting stampede and cascade and, and damage that that occurred. Um, to give you an idea how old this is, this is 95 million years old. This was when Australia was part of India, part of South America, part of Antarctica 
and it was called Gomana land. Mm -hmm. There was no flowering trees, there was no grasses. About 100 k out here there was a big ocean. And that ocean went right up through the Gulf country and up through Darwin, um, well where they now are. Um, all around here would have been big conifer forests and ferns and just along each side of here would have been a freshwater lake. And where the building stands was a big mud flat going out into the lake. Now along here you've got all the ornithopods pods and all this, um, the, the smaller cephalopods or cephalosaurs. If you look over here you can see a depiction of that. You've got all your conifers and your ferns and the little ones, only the little fellas like this would have had feathers sprouting off their tails and your ornithopods which are all vegetarian uh, coming in for a drink in the afternoon, just like the kangaroos and the emus do today. Now, at the same time, the Marabatosaurus, a large ornithopod, walking down here, must have seen the predator coming. He's gone, I'm out of here. Man, off in that direction. The predators come in, stalked along where we've exposed an art quarry, and you can see actually the footprint where he's turned and he's dashed in to grab something. We don't know if he got it because the footprints are then washed away by the edge of the lake, but the resulting chaos that, it, that happened is all shown on the rock where we go and have a look mm. today. Now we know what happened because each and every single, single footprint has been traced and mapped. So we know there was family groups, adults right through to babies. So we know they weren't singular species, they were living in groups. Mm. So that's something we've discovered about the dinosaurs. Some of the information also has changed over time. If we go over here, he was only about 1.5, 1.6 metres. He would have been as tall as me, I suppose, a bit wider, um, huge big legs on the back of him. If you ever watched Jurassic Park, mm. very much like a velociraptor, except on the front he had three big claws like this, 30 centimetres long. Like a wedge tail eagle, when he attacked and he used those, they'd lock. With this fellow, they know it's a new, whole new species because they've got 60% of it and it's got characteristics of some and characteristics of others, but it all fits together as one. So he's a whole new feature. Not really, these things are sticking up out of the black soil. That's why Winton is so famous for dinosaur bones because there's lots of black soil country and they find a lot of these things. And then you can see, he gets about five footprints up and he just takes off. He marks them down. And then on the footprint you can see where all the money went to the side. And you go back to the back of the time. Out there is the mud up to the top of the head. And these are the ones there. Uh, 95 million years ago, a two minute exercise happened here where a predator screamed out of the conifers and grabbed its prey and the resulting chaos occurred around it is recorded for all time, right here. Nowhere else in the world, there's nothing like this. And um, as an exercise goes, 95 million years, that's older than Australia, that's older than, yeah, that's astonishing.